the band. When was it that the players recaptured all the notes still throbbing in the dark and returned them to the brass throats of their exhausted instruments? When was it that the band went home? The morning after Mexico poem. Okay. Tonight, Mega Mangos got a gig in the high school gym. Maybe because he feels deep rhythmic bonds to us or because we can't drive yet, Poppy drives us and all of our stuff to the high school about 10 blocks away. It's a complicated process. Poppy's car is a Studebaker, a model no longer made. He found it with the aid of God, he says, in a vacant lot. Vacant means empty. Just resting there, waiting for him. He's convinced, year by year, falling to ruin. He and Lenio Morales, his compadre, compadre means friend, hauled it home, hunk by roasted, rusted hunk, and restored it to full glory. So the car was very old. He found it broken down in a parking lot. They hauled it home. He did all the work on it, and now the car works again. Papi named it Valentin for his Western movie hero, Valentin de la Sierra. And Papi loves the car so much that he even gave the car its own name, which is Valentin. Valentin's guacamole green. Guacamole is, if you don't know, a dip from Mexico made out of avocados, and the car is the same color. With a long snubbed nose, it looks like a monster dragonfly that has no wings. Because of its age, the car has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, so it doesn't do freeways. Because of its design, Dragonfly Slim, its passenger load is small. I don't care. I hope when I get my license, I can drive it. Now, in sizzling September, Poppy's navigating our band down the barrio's small back streets. They give off a good smell of sun-softened tar. We're wedged inside Valentine, crushing our tropical shirts, bright enough to compete with jungle parrots. It's the drummer's idea we dress like this. He's from Veracruz, palm tree land, same as my friend Raul. Insane in the membrane, insane in the brain, I'm singing totally jazzed about tonight. The faithful and law-abiding Valentine, oof, you're law-abiding, that means that you follow the rules and you follow the law. So the faithful and law-abiding Valentine hauls us and our bulky instruments in three separate shifts never exceeding, never going over, 25 miles per hour, the posted speed. Its blunt insect nose bores bravely through the thick smog. Smog is a type of fog um, that happens in big cities like LA, not because of the weather, because of the pollution, right? Makes it hard to see, it's kind of stinky. Because the car lacks air conditioning, each load simmers inside like Thanksgiving turkeys, meaning it gets really warm. I think guitars could warp in this heat, meaning it's so hot the guitar could change its shape, like almost like it's melting. On the last pass, the group I'm in, a car swings from the curb in front of our house, a car full of guys openly swigging Tecate beer from cans wearing jackets with macho emblems and bul bulgy wraparounds that throw off purple tinges. Like big, like big fly eyes. They wheel alongside Valentine, nearly enough to scrape the paint, ta taunting Poppy about the car's looks and speed. Claro, clearly no cops in sight. I know them, the ones who nearly flattened us that day on our, the way to school. They look like they could give out a real pounding. Oi, pinche viejo, get a horse. Better yet, get a jackass, old man. That means donkey. This type of thing happens in the barrio on a regular basis. Papi always tells us, for confrontations, what you want to do is be calm. Not say anything in heat. Loose-mouthed guys get busted up or shot to stay silent. K coraje. 
You know what I just learned is that there is a Spanish dictionary in the back of the book. So, que coraje, what anger is what that means. Without a flinch, Papi drags on, face rigid, like the carving of an Aztec god. Those guys hassle him the whole way with any name they want to throw out. One pours beer on Valentine, just a slosh, like he'd rather suck it down than waste it. By the time we re regroup at school, our shirts are pasted on our to our bodies like damp feathers and not just from the heat. So meaning that they're so sweaty that their clothes are sticking to their skin. And he's saying not just from the heat because it's hot outside, but also because they were nervous um, because of that encounter that they just had with gang members. Now those menso heads squeal away in scorches of tire rubber laughing. That scalds my brain. How can they menace my father, this beautiful man? He's the real macho, I believe, strong enough to be gentle. Ooh, meaning like macho, um, he's so strong, right? He doesn't have to show off. He can be gentle. Thanks, Poppy, I say quietly. I hope he knows I also mean be careful. Thanks, Senor Rodriguez, says the rest of Mega Mango respectfully, barely above Valentine's buzz. Poppy lifts a hand. He'll be back after the dance. The gym's like an airplane hangar, tall and doomed. The floors of pine planks, once varnished to a gloss, no doubt, now with an overall scuffed finish. The place holds an odor I love, of wood and stale sweat and chewing gum and more sweat and of tough rubber skins of all the basketballs ever dribbled here. I breathe deep and take this inside me. Excitement ripples in my veins from hanging with Luis and his friends. I try to act cool, to hide my age. We bring in our instruments, all but the piano provided by the school. Everyone makes sure his, his is still in tune after the jugular journey inside Valentine. There's lots of twanging and thumping. The guitars especially need reworking of nearly all their pegs. Claro, the gourds unfazed. The gym looks pretty okay. Stage draped with black curtains for a plain black drop against our colorfulness. Ceiling looped with crepe paper limp with the late summer. In the center, a mirror ball dangles like an indoor moon. Soon, if things go well, couples will surge to our music, swoon beneath the ball of silver. So they are in a band. We learned this earlier in the book. And now they're playing at school. There's a school dance and the band is what is going to perform. <coughs> Excuse me. Party time. Those punks still crawl at the edge of my brain, but I hum to wedge them out. A few... Teachers stiffly take up positions, like trees, on the lookout for troublemakers. While we warm up, kids start trickling in, all tentative, their voices an overall hum of whispers and giggles. They arrive in ones and twos, usually of separate sexes. Some are dragging their tall-heeled shoes, as though having a second having second thoughts about how excellent an idea it is to attend a school dance. Other couples just plunge in, dressed with zest and laughing, the girls bird-legged with hairdos of extremes, like dark waterfalls or high wasp nests, the guys with smooth fade haircuts and hoop earrings like pirates. The shoes of these pairs blaze with excessive polish, proclaiming they're ready to dance. And they do. Mega Mango blasts out its full fervent repertoire of merengues and crumbrias and salsas. These are all types of um, Mexican music um, that the band is playing. Terco Corazon, Cumbia de la Muerte, Acompañame Civil. So these are all the names of the songs they're playing. Though the audience doesn't know it, for my mother, the band plays what she always attempts to sing at home. Ojale que la Cafe. 
Mommy's addicted to coffee. Ooh, just like Miss Castro is. I'm not alone. <laughs> this song expresses her hope that one fine day, coffee will rain down and flood the countryside. Soon, everyone's got the fever. Even the football players who've wandered in. Wide, invincible hulks. They dance like they're still at football practice. Like they're swimming in refried beans. But, hey, at least they dance. So this means they're not very good. Their bodies are kind of slow. But at least they're dancing. The whole place thrashing with motion. Couples pressed close like fresh and warm tortillas. The gym smells like melting hairspray and aftershave. Our band has no actual musical plan. We go with the feel of things, with the dancer's mood. Above everything, the mirror ball spins, sending swarms of light over the walls like, stir, like stirred around stars. In this muy cool moment, the dancing suddenly stops, ceases. We quit playing and look for the problem, though I feel what it is. That gang from Creepland that taunted Poppy enters in full swagger, bringing the general feel of threat. Even from this distance, I can see the leader's hands bunching as if it is for Pieto. Ooh, let's look at what that word means. Looking for fights, uh-oh. These guys are easy to evaluate, measly types. Typical lizard brain vagos. Oh, better see what vagos means. <gasps> vagrants, ooh, that's a wonderful word. Ooh, a vagrant is like a bad guy. They're up to no good. Equipped for only fighting. For them, the world's a sour place where everything happens, hap the, everything that happens twists to a personal insult. The least lift of an eyebrow, an offensive color, the intake of the wrong amount of breath, having mucho fun, the head lizard flames, his demon grin, his words bleared by beer. Ooh, having much fun, that means. The invaders have high hair, like rooster combs, they aren't dressed for dancing, wearing pants so baggy, one false breath and they could slip off. Too baggy to tell if they're harboring weapons. First, fear spears my tripas. Ooh, wonder what that means. Gut, ooh, your stomach. You know when you get that pit in your stomach when you're nervous? Um. Then a weird wave of heat sprawls over me. I'm sweating galones, meaning gallons of sweat, soaking my shirt. Mommy will never scrub the armpit smell out. The next thing, ugly words like toads spurt from many mouths. The chaperone teachers lamely try some enforcing, but scuffling and shoving break out anyways. So much for weapons. If arms, the punk be splashing, slashing or firing by now. Some dancers, including the linemen, pick up on this and form a barrier of bulk between the punks and the rest of us. Then comes the big stare down. Like at the OK Corral, these guys reveal they're just on display, too measly to hold a gaze long. Our guys advance. The reptile boys back up, too easily. They don't want to fight. Now. They just enjoy sending fear ripples over people. Inspired by this show of righteous force, Mega Mango recovers its spunk. The drummer scrolls out a drum roll as they move back and back. The guitar players strum and sing Vaya con Dios, though that's not what they really mean. Just when the gang reaches the door, Luis taunts them with a few choppy notes, well known as standing for the worst thing that you can say to someone's mother. Ya estuvo. Ooh, let's see what this means. That's it. <laughs> Lizard's got a temper on him. So the gang members haven't come to really um, start a fight. They just want to scare people. He smolders at my brother. Oh, yay, trumpet boy. I know where you live. The dance is dead. 
When Pappy meets us from, from everyone at once, he hears hot bursts about the standoff. Lips so stiff, his words about to crack. Pappy says, this is a thing that greatly angers me. A thing for worry. Grimly, warily, he shuts, he shuttles Mega Mango home, meaning he um, brings them home in the car, the band. I'd like to walk, to feel the ground beneath my feet, but that's too dangerous. Any place, those junior punks could be lying in the weeds. I ask myself, what's the good of staring, starting up a band, starting anything? Low life's just come and turn it ugly. Ooh. Mm. All right, here we go.